Hi, I'm, uh, hi, I'm Ziming Liu. Uh, I'm a fourth year MIT uh, PhD student at MIT and IFI. Uh, people have talked about how generative AI can transform the education of physics. I'm gonna talk about the other way around, how physics can transform generative, generative AI uh, in a technical way. So the question I wanna ask is, can physics offer something back to generative models? So arguably, the answer is, of course, yes, because philosophically speaking, our universe or the whole physics is just a giant generative model. So uh, in a paper done by my advisor and collaborators, here it shows that you can think of it, think of our universe as starting from just a few cosmological parameters, and we have the physical laws uh, give rise to this you know, fascinating universe that we are living in. Um, so every data, including like telescope data, are just generated from this uh, very few cosmological parameters. This is very much like in generative models, you're starting from a categorical label, some features, and this will finally give you um, realistic looking images. So yeah, so that's all I want to talk about it. The answer is yes, but I'm just kidding. Uh, we need actually build the generative model in practice, not just talking about you know, the high level um, the high level duality between the two things. So practically speaking, there are already two families, well, well there, there are of course many more, but here I want to confine to the two, uh, most two recent uh, physics inspired generative models, one called the diffusion models, basically leverage the idea of diffusion equation um, in thermodynamics. Another family of the model uh, is called Poisson flow generative models. Uh, by the way, I'm also one of the co author on this line of work. So the Poisson flow models leverage the idea of electrostatics, uh, specifically the Poisson equation, um, and use the Poisson equation to build Poisson, uh, this line of Poisson flows. So let me just uh, briefly review what this model, how these models work. So for uh, diffusion models or very, or, or its relative score-based models, they're actually very uh, similar. The basic idea is to view your data samples as some distribution p of x, and you compute the score function. Um, and the way you generate samples is basically run a launch wing dynamics uh, using the score function as a velocity field, adding some you know, thermal noise. And this dynamics will, will guide you towards to converge to a stable distribution, which is, which is exactly the data distribution. So uh, here's a nice video from uh, website of Yang Song, the creator of uh, score-based generative models. You can you can nicely see how these models, uh, how these samples, starting from nearly a uniform distribution, uh, but it uh, converges finally converges into this bimodal Gaussian distribution. So the second model, the Poisson flow model, uh, takes the idea of electrostatic. So the basic idea is to uh, view view data samples as charged as electric charges then data distribution translated to charge density, and then we can just compute electric potential, electric fields based on these charge densities. And then the way we generate um, data samples is basically first we randomly sample. So let's assume that our data di distribution is this heart-shaped distribution on 2D, and the sampling process is carried out in 3D. So we first just uniformly sample a sample on this you know, uh, uniform distribution on the hemisphere. And then we simply follow the electric field lines and do this iteration until the data sample hits this, you know, uh, 2D, uh, 2D plane. So once you hit this plane, you got this, you know, cute looking uh, dog image. So here's a general question. Is there, a, is there a magic box, which are called a universal converter that you just put in any physical processes? or any physical equation, and it will automatically output a generative model. So we put in a diffusion model, it outputs, uh, we put in diffusion equation, output diffusion model, we input Poisson equation, it output Poisson flow, we input, say, wave equation, you can output wave generative models. Uh, we put in some x, x equation, output x, the corresponding generative model. Does there exist such a universal, universal converter? The answer is yes, but. Uh, the yes part is because I will show you a concrete protocol that can convert physical processes into generative models. The caveat part is that the transformed, the converted generative models may not have desirable properties that we want in practice. So 
here just some, some summary of the results. Like it's, uh, it's our expectation that diffusion equation and you know, Poisson equation can be converted into general field models. That's why people already discovered them. But people haven't discovered wave equation, uh, wave generative model yet. And I'll tell you a reason why people haven't discovered that because it's not desirable. Uh, but there are other equations. Some of them are desirable, some of them are not desirable, but it's interesting to notice that there are even new equations that's desirable. So, um, so, so pardon me for being a bit technical uh, in, in the following. So to build the bridge between physics and the generative model, the key idea here is that they share, that they both can be described by partial differential equations. So um, physicists use this, um, something similar to this to describe uh, physical phenomena, including uh, Poisson equation, including uh, diffusion equation. And generative model, uh, mathematically speaking, they're just fo the Fokker-Planck equation, which has this form. So if this two PDE is actually the same PDE, then physicists have a long literature of deriving analytical solutions of these physical PDEs. Then we can directly transfer the solutions already available in the physics uh, literature and transfer that into generative models. In this way, one you know, analytically solvable, even not necessarily analytical, just one solvable, you know, physical PDE would then translate to one valid generative model. So uh, to do that, we want to ma match both the right, left-hand side and right-hand side. Matching the right-hand side is easy. Uh, matching the left-hand side is a, little bit, is a little bit hard to discuss, have a, have a systematical way, but in practice, we can do the construction case by case, and it's, it's usually quite straightforward. I will give you some example here. So the goal here is that we have this diffusion equation on the left, and we want to rewrite it into the form on the right. So maybe you can spend 10 minutes staring at these uh, two equations, and you can figure out, you can, uh, you can rewrite your diffusion equation in this form, which uh, exactly match this form. And you can then read off these terms correspondingly, and this velocity field here, here is basically uh, the score field that we uh, derived in diffusion, uh, in diffusion models. The amazing thing here is that we, in the original you know, derivation of diffusion models, there are a lot of inspiration from thermodynamics, a lot of you know, hand wavy arguments, but here everything is precise. You just start from a well-defined mathematical equation, rewrite it, and you automatically get this score field. And the same thing uh, is true for the Poisson equation. You simply start from this Poisson equation, you try to rewrite it into this you know, Fokker-Planck equation, you match both hand side, we would get that the velocity field is, this, is, is exactly the Poisson field. So, so again, in, in our first paper of the Poisson flow, we have a lot of inspiration from physics, but my point here is that it's not necessary. Everything can be you know, precise and rigorous in a mathematical sense. But, but will the success continue? It looks like we, everything works uh, so easily well, but let's look at the wave equation. So if you, do this, if you do the same homework, you would see that, oh, it looks like you can very easily convert it into a Fokker-Planck equation, hence there might be, uh, looks promising there will be a wave generative model. But there is one caveat, is that for generative models, um, you start from you know, a complicated shaped data distribution at first, and then you have some forward process that mess up the distribution. Uh, in, in diffusion model, you start from like some spiky distribution, it finally becomes a large Gaussian blob. The same is uh, similar for, for Poisson, you start from some spiky distribution, you finally got some you know, uh, blurry distribution. So that would be your prior distribution, meaning that your prior distribution, uh, sorry for being technical here, but the uh, prior distribution is independent of your data distribution, but that is not true for the wave equation. So imagine you drop stones in, into a pound and uh, assuming the ideal world, there's no dissipation, uh, there's no dissipation, there's no resistance, then the wave will propagate forever and there will always be this sharp wave fronts that can always tell you where the, where the initial point in time uh, the stone was dropped. So that way the wave equation is not smooth in this sense. So we cannot have a very easy to sample prior distribution. Uh, say, so, so we can easily draw a sample from this and this distribution, but it's not easy to draw a sample from this distribution. That's uh, what I'm saying here. So the condition 
for general for physical equations to be you know desirable general models are are two parts. The first condition is that it can be rewritten as a density flow. I have shown you that on a case by case basis, this is usually straightforward. So let's not worry about that. The second part is 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 is, is the more uh, important one here is that it should be able to be becoming smoothing over time. So what kind of equations have this smoothing condition? Uh, so uh, diffusion equation, Poisson equation, of course, have this moving condition. And interestingly, this so-called screened Poisson equation, the Yukawa potential, uh, known in with the weak interaction theory in physics, also has this you know smoothing condition. But unfortunately, wave equation and shortening equation, they are basically wave equations. They're oscillating forever. Does not have such uh, does not have such uh, smoothing condition. But this still does not rule out the possibility of more complicated like quantum system where you have you know, a, a thermostat or something. So this is a, just a very pre preliminary rule out the possibility, but there could be more pos uh, possibility of uh, uh, a, a even bigger framework. Uh, interestingly, that for like the dissipative wave equation, the Helmholtz equation, they have two number parameters in the equation. So for some range of the equation, they are desirable, but for some range of the uh, parameter, they are not desirable. So it's, 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 a, mo it's a more subtle story here. So, um, so this slide basically says that to determine if an equation is smooth or not, we can basically uh, borrow the idea of dispersion relations from mathematics. Uh, you, you just do the calculation, and here's some criteria you can check. You can immediately check. And uh, finally, the interesting thing is that we don't need to keep ourselves in the realm of physics. We can actually take any partial differential equation, not necessarily even have physical any physical meanings, just have the p partial differential equation, compute this dispersion relation, check if it meets this moving condition. If yes, it's a you know, candidate generative model that people can study in the future. So um, as a closing remark, I have just talked about uh, the, the feasibility of physical processes into generative models, but how do they perform on different tasks in practice and in, uh, in theory? And also, I just talk about linear PDEs for the simplicity of you know solvability of these uh, solutions. So we can also go beyond uh, linear PDEs uh, to, to to embrace like those nonlinear uh, equations, including Navier-Stokes equation and reaction diffusion equation, etc. That um, that they are the really reason why our universe is so fascinating because of nonlinearity. Can we also borrow this nonlinearity into generative models? That's like the uh, open question. So thank you for listening. All right, we've got time for maybe one question. Uh, maybe the next speaker can already uh, come up. Thanks, Ming. I, I really like this connection. Um, it, so there's generative models where the kind of noise space and the output space are the same dimensionality. And then there's cases where, like with large language models, where the kind of the output dimensionality is variable. Are there physical systems that, that you've explored where you can have, in some sense, variable size um, outputs and drawing from a distribution that way? Or all the cases that you've studied, cases where, in some sense, the dimensionality and right. the output space are the same? Yeah, that's a great question. We've been thinking about the question, but failed to answer that. So, so currently, we're just using fixed dimension system. But maybe we can consider like a system of varying number of particles, something like that. Uh, like, what, like it can have contact with some thermostat. It can have fluctuating number of particles. But uh, that's already uh, that's still a very preliminary idea. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you.